Looking killer, man. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, it's in. Hey, welcome back to Freeman's Garage. We are working on the 56 Chevrolet project once again, and we are finishing some unfinished business from the last video on this project where we were cleaning up our leaf springs and our shackles, and we were gonna paint everything and put new bushings in and reinstall that suspension back in the rear of the car. And then we were gonna put our rear axle that we had cleaned up a few videos back. We were gonna put that in the car as well after the springs are back in. But as I recall, we ended up with a socket stuck inside of a leaf spring and a bushing sleeve that wouldn't quite come out all the way. And we broke our back on it until we literally ran out of time, used up the very last minute and I had to leave town to go work on other projects. But we're back now, and we're gonna finish this. And we got the parts to prove it. Oh, that was supposed to jingle and make a bunch of loud noise and sound really cool because there's U-bolts, brand new U-bolts in this box. Let's start over here on the driver's side of the car. This is the driver's side leaf spring and this is right where we left off so it's a good place to start there's that little bit of sleeve still in there and this socket stuck in there once that's taken care of we can clean that leaf spring up to paint it as well as our passenger side leaf spring and we'll also clean up all our shackle pieces and get them painted then it's installing bushings then we put the springs and shackles in with their new bushings and then the rear end in i actually think that i hammered chiseled and cut in here uh, as much as i'm going to be able to i think we should try to press this socket out the way it came in thinking if i take a bolt with a nut on it that will fit in here just right where it's Big enough to not get wedged inside the hole, inside the socket, but big enough to where it can push the socket out. There we go, I just had to hammer it past our debris field we created in here. How's that look? Oh, that's pretty cool. That fits perfectly. That's gonna work. Perfect. Check it, make sure it's right where we want it. And it is. What's going on here? I think maybe we met the uh, vertical limit limitation. I never put these on top. When I go to shake the press around to adjust things because want it to fall on my head. There, we'll go up one. I'll go up one. Yep. Alright, you know it may be hot in this garage, but if you spent all day at work in a shop busting semi tires, you don't want to hear a peep out of me because I can walk right in that house in the air conditioning. Wow, that's pretty much it's just about out. Let's take a look. Still in there though. This is working, we need a longer bolt, but this doesn't want to come out. It's kind of jammed in here. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Get out of here. What we're going to do here is we're going to take a chisel and we're going to knock this stuff out of our way and then we're going to take a sawzall with a metal blade and we're just going to cut the sleeve out. We just I just want to get this stuff out of the way of our blade. 
Actually, I'm just going to go straight to it with the Sawzall. I mean, come on, we can cut through anything. Pretty much all the way through, and I don't want to accidentally cut the leaf spring. So, here we go, let's knock it out. Beautiful, coming apart. Completely broken free, and right now, I just got a song playing in my head. You know that song, Don't Let the Sun Catch You Crying? Jerry and the Pacemakers? Come on, we all know that one. <laughs> Lift with your back, not your legs. Kidding, don't do that. Now we have officially picked up where we left off. It passed that point. So now, now this video here is really gonna start cooking. We are not sandblasting these. We are going to hit them up with a wire wheel. Let's wire wheel both of the leaf springs and we'll clean out inside the eyes here with some sandpaper so that our new bushings will go in properly. And then we'll paint them in the paint booth, aka outside. And let's not make things complicated here. Let's clean up and paint these two leaf springs. We'll get that done. While they are drying, then we will clean up our shackle bits and pieces and then get those painted. And we might throw the shackle pieces into the blast cabinet and blast them before we paint them. I don't know yet. We'll see when we get to that point. But right now, I'm going to get my workout in. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually not that heavy. Okay, I'm showing off a little. Uh, <laughs> uh, Yeah, but I'm just going to keep working. Okay, we got one and a half leaf springs hit up with the wire wheel and the battery on the drill die. I know I'm unprepared. I have no charged batteries. So those are over there on the floor charging. But while we wait, let's go ahead and clean up our shackle pieces and we're not going to do it in the blast cabinet. Let's uh, keep it on the same plane field as the leaf springs. So we'll wire wheel it, but we'll do these bits and pieces on the drill press. Now if I could just find my safety glasses. Alright, that'll do it for this piece. We're not doing restoration paint job here. We're knocking off the powdery surface rust on here, bringing it down to a paintable surface with some Rust-Oleum type products. I actually think I went a little overboard when we cleaned up and painted the front uh, stub on this car. There's a link for that video down in the video description, so if you want to watch that one next after you watch this one, you could see how extreme I went on that. Looking pretty good, huh? Compared to that. Daddy-like. Should I stop saying that, by the way? Comment below. There, that's the last of the shackle pieces cleaned up and ready for paint. I mean, we'll spray everything off with some brake cleaner first before we spray paint on them. 
you know, just to make sure we got all the, the dust and everything off and all the grease off. Now, since we're not doing a restoration, you know, could we get away with not have spending a decent amount of time like I just did on cleaning parts like the threads real well, even though we're not taking, you know, other things down to bare metal and going that extreme? Well, yeah, you know, we probably could just cram all the rusty hardware and stuff, you know, just cram it all rusty right back together and, you know, we could, we could prop. People got to secure their vehicles. We could probably get away with that, but man, you know, just because we're not doing a restoration doesn't mean that we're cutting corners. We still want to do a good job and be proud of our work. That's the American way. Alrighty, we got a charged battery. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. Oops. Yep, just what I need to do, break things. Okay, so we'll put this one on. We shouldn't need it. Well, we probably will now that I said that. But let's throw this uh, charge battery in the grill. Grill. The drill. I'm going to grab this impact socket. Otherwise, that's going to get lost. And let's finish cleaning up our leaf springs. Unless you don't want to. We could just go in the house and sip on some lemonade. Or some sweet tea. I have the time of my life. That is done. Now we're ready to spray those springs off with some brake cleaner. Make sure we got no dust or grease on it. And then we'll start applying the paint, which I'll show you the paint that we're gonna use in just a second here. But while I was finishing up prepping those springs, I thought of something that I wanted to tell you. You know, one of the reasons why I don't want to do full restoration type work on you know on paint and body and chassis parts and frame and why I kind of tone things down a little bit after going kind of extreme up here on the I'll hit my foot up here on the front is because in my opinion and in my experience in a lot of cases if you're not going full blown down the metal and real good primer and paint job. As soon as all this stuff starts getting slammed through rainstorms and puddles and all kinds of road debris, things like surface rust are, they're, they're in your near future. And this car is not going to sit around. This car is gonna be on road trips, it's gonna be a daily driver in all weather conditions. So that's a big reason why we're doing chassis and suspension paint the way that we are. We'll just, I, I don't know, I don't know how often, but every once in a while or in a blue moon, you, you look under the car and you see a little spot that just needs a little, tss, tss, just a little touch up. It's okay, we, we, we can do that. You know what I'm saying? We're going to drive the heck out of this car. And if it goes anywhere fancy, it's not going to be Pebble Beach. It's going to be the Redneck Riviera. Ah, that was pretty cool, huh? All right, the leaf springs are ready to paint, and we are using one of Freeman's Garage's go-to staples, the Suave for Men 2-in-1 Shampoo plus Conditioner. Saves time, saves money. Now, your hair may not be as nice as if you shampooed and conditioned separately, but what is conditioner anyways? 
And does anybody even use that stuff? Is, is conditioner even real? Have you ever actually used that stuff? I mean, and anyways, this isn't a beauty contest. So let's spray these springs. First coat of paint is on our leaf springs and their shackles. That's so going to take a little bit to dry before we can apply our second coat. We're going with two coats. So while we're waiting for that, let's dive into the trunk area here because I want to clean up and paint around the spring hanger area. Here are our spring hangers. Now the reason why I want to clean up around them with the wire wheel and get a little bit of paint just in the region around each spring hanger is because once our leaf springs are installed again you're not going to be able to get in here and clean and paint or you know right around where the shackles are and whatnot. So it makes sense to do that right now. I do plan on cleaning up and painting the entire frame when we separate the body from the frame when we go to put our new floor pan in. A new floor pan for this car is a big ticket item that I will not be purchasing in the next week or two and it's going to take a lot of space to do it the way I want to do it separating the body from the frame. We're pretty much going to need every single square foot of Freeman's Garage so Certain projects like that need to get wrapped up so that they can be out of here and things like all that needs to be organized somewhere else. So I've been doing what I can when I can to try to keep the project moving. Which is why all this cleaning and painting is all done up here at the very front. And why we've been working on cleaning and painting a bit at the rear of the car. Now up at the Freeman's Garage North Dakota location, we could blow this car apart and sandblast and paint the frame outside all in one shot. But I can't be up there full time. I gotta be at the Texas location full time. Which is why it looks like this. But you know what I always say, there's always time for sniveling and complaining later. Let's kick it into overdrive, man. Here's something I've noticed on Tri-5 cars. Well, not the only cars, but these in particular. That's a factory weld on this spring hanger. Looks like it might have been, uh, might have been some wind whipping through the plant when they welded that. Blew their shielding gas away. Well, actually, I don't know what they used to weld these exactly. This is the passenger side. It looks better, but you get the picture. There's some welds up front that are kind of boogery too, but hey, this isn't the only car that you'll find this on. And you gotta think about it. 
this car passed the high school test, all right? In the 70s, who knows? Who knows how many sets of train tracks this car jumped? And it's fine. Or, or is it at the point where it's ready to break on us? Well, the first train track jumps. Now, no, this isn't the General Lee. Um, ooh, should we paint this orange and put in? A, no, I'm kidding. It's got to be a '68 or '69 Charger for that. Wheel in the sky keeps on turning. Wheel in the sky keeps on turning. Oh, it's recording? That's embarrassing. I actually think it's pretty good. Okay, not supposed to be an amazing paint job, as stated before. Just wanted to get some paint in the crevices, the Cragmires. Cragmires? Is that a cartoon character, or is, or is that a space inside of a crack in a mountain? Um, it, it, you, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, that's as far as we went underneath, and yeah, nothing on the the very bottom. Oh no, is that a run? Oh, I got a run in my hose. I'll sand that down and fix that real quick. Again, it's not supposed to be anything special, okay? I've never claimed to be the Honorable Kevin Tates, all right? We're just trying to make things a little easier on ourselves when we do separate the frame from the body and do our rattle can frame paint job. Let's flip our parts over that are outside, our springs and shackles, get some more paint on there, and then while that's drying, we need to do exactly what we did at the back here, but up where the front of the leaf springs mount. So we're going to do exactly the same as that, same procedure, but instead of where the rear of the leaf spring mounts. It's going to be right here up at our front hanger. One of the downfalls of having an all draft paint booth, aka outside, is you grab a fossil here. Grab a couple fossils to hold down our professional mat, professional cardboard, I call it pro board. A little windy out here, just got to wait for it to settle down, there we go, don't paint the fossils, can't replace those, well you could, it would just take 30 million years. We don't need to do any more than this side of the spring hanger right now. We can wait until the body's off the car to do all this over here. But, you know, why not go a little bit further each way and get a couple extra minutes of work done on it. Less we'll have to do when we take the body off the frame. And I didn't notice, well, see this so that rock come through. This is all full of North Dakota gravel road. You've probably heard me say that more than once while working on this car in Freeman's garage. But this is all, all North Dakota gravel road. 
and this hole here where your bolt goes through the frame, that's full of gravel too. I want to try to shop vac as much of that out as we can. So I kind of created a little bit more work than we needed to do for today's project or today's piece, small piece of this big project, but it's um it's worth it. all the gravel out of this car out of the frame it is packed I forgot all about the bolts that secure the front of our leaf springs to the front spring hangers that we just cleaned up and painted it's just one bolt for each side so I'm gonna go ahead and clean these up real quick and then I think we're ready to rip some new parts out of the packaging and start assembling things and putting it back on the car. So I say now let's start bringing some parts in from the paint booth, see how the paint job turned out on them, and let's start uh, doing what we need to do to prepare to start bolting parts back on the car. Let's complete one side of the car at a time, just so that we don't get all confused in our, in our head here. We don't want to put the cart before the horse, if you know what I'm saying. So are we going to do the driver's side or the passenger's side first? I can't make my mind up, so why don't we... Let's flip a coin. I have one. Oh, a quarter. Would be nice. No, feels like a dime. All right, heads is driver's side, tails is passenger's side. So there's the heads, okay? All right, here we go. There's no way I could cheat. Tails. So we're doing the uh, passenger side. Our shackle plates and our nuts, they turned out great. 
They look good. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with how this is turning out. Oh yeah, fantastic. The leaf spring turned out great as well. It looks just about as good as painted rust could be. Let's press our bushing into the spring. Now the pressed in bushing goes on the front of the spring, the front spring eye. And if you see the center pin here, okay, if you look at that and then you look that way down the spring and that way down the spring, the shorter, if you want to call it, direction is the front of the car. So that's towards the front and that's to the back of the car. So we want to press that bushing into here and we are going to press it in with the flange end of the bushing on what would be the outside of the car. So if that's the front, the spring is going to go in the car this way. And so we're going to press our bushing in from this side here. Do you think we're going to be able to do this without without uh, scratching the new paint on our springs? I don't know. We'll find out. There's our bushing, and that's the flange end right there. And as usual, this is not a how-to. Just we're just hanging out in the garage. I'm just showing you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. It's not like the paint really matters that much anyways because the very first Dukes of Hazard-esque thing that we do with this car, well, you know what's gonna happen to the paint. I'm half serious, half kidding. We're gonna use the car, but we're also gonna take care of it. I'm not using any grease or anything. We're just going bone dry. And I'm not going to put anything between the press and the bushing yet. I'm just gonna just kiss it a little. Just get it sort of started. And there's a link down below in the video description for these bushings and all the parts that we're using today. In case you want the exact same stuff that I'm using here. It's actually going in really easy so far, so we'll go a little bit further with just the way that we're doing it right now. And I'm going to re-look at this real quick because this is that moment where if we don't double check what we're doing, we will press this thing all the way in and then when we go to put it on the car, we're going to go, Oh! No, we did it backwards! Alright, now we need something to put in between. Oh, jeez. Good thing I have safety glasses on. I just ran my safety glasses right into this. Well, actually, if I didn't have safety glasses on, my vision would have been clearer and I would have seen it and I wouldn't have rammed it with my eyeball. There's arguments for both. All I ask for is for this bushing to press in evenly and straight. Ooh, nice. Going in. Getting like Flynn. When I said flan, it made me think of flan. Have you ever had flan? Have you ever ate flan? I probably haven't. If I did, I don't remember. Now the manual from 1955, which was, well, I believe the 55 service manual was revised and had 56 info added to it, I believe. Uh, it says to press the bushing 
until it makes contact with the eye and the leaf spring, and that's exactly what we did. All right, I got our leaf spring bolt and nut that we cleaned up, and uh, I'm going under. Wish me luck. I'm going to put the nut in from the outside, just the way that we took it out. All right, now without completely destroying the paint on this thing. Ah! Oh, wait, hold on. I think I've already, wait, hold on. I'm already, <laughs> I should probably be on the other side of the spring. All right, hold on, false alarm. All right. Uh, here we go. Oh! oh man. I hope that buffs. Oh! Oh! I hope we can buff that out. I should have brought a pry bar to pry open the uh, spring hanger a little bit. Or a rubber mallet would be nice. I'm totally unprepared. I would ask you what I was thinking, but it's pretty clear I was not thinking. We are just about lined up. There we go. Oh, 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 beautiful, like a glove, as they say. You know, the manual from 1956 says to line the bolt up with the hole. That's exactly what I did, and the bolt went in. Isn't that amazing? Okay, I'm getting the nut on right now. Or I'm trying to. Well, I just dropped the nut inside the frame rail, but... That's okay, because... We don't even need to put the nut on right now anyways. In a minute, I'll explain to you why we don't even need they have the nut on the leaf spring bolt right now. But first, let's get our uh, shackle bushings and our shackle plates or shackle assembly together so we can get the back of the spring hung up in place. And then we will knock out the driver's side. Finally, these shackle bushings that have been floating around Freeman's garage forever, we finally get to open these and install them. These are Dan Chuck bushings, top quality. And right here in the back, proudly made in the USA, Santa Ana, California. Just how we like it. There's a total of eight shackle bushings for the entire car. So four on each side. We're gonna need two of the longer ones on each side and two of the shorter ones on each side. We are gonna put a little bit of grease inside these bushings because they are urethane or polyurethane. If they were rubber inside of a metal sleeve, like what our front bushings are in front of the springs, I wouldn't grease those, or I, I don't grease them because I think that the grease breaks down the rubber over time. But if you got urethane, go for it in my opinion. I'm just using the best, stickiest grease that I have on hand. I did put grease on the bolt that we put to the front of our leaf spring as well. Our shorter bushings here, they go into the leaf spring, like so. Our longer ones go here. And you can put these on the shackle pins first. 
if you wanted to. It's up to you. You know, a guy can do whatever he wants, right? Give it a whack. Perfect. Here's where this gets kind of funny because if you're going by the book, if you're reading the manual from 56 and you're following the instructions on how to put the springs and the shackles back together, you know the, the type of manual that you would be using if you worked at a Chevy dealership and you were servicing a car that came in, it only gives you so many scenarios it doesn't give you a scenario for, well, maybe the rear end is not attached to the leaf springs, or maybe it is attached to the leaf springs, or maybe you're doing this or you're doing that. It pretty much just gives you one way to do it. So when you are doing it and you're looking at it, it can get kind of mind boggling. I could see a guy putting things together and taking them apart more than once because so you know this is one side of the shackle and then these are your two shackle pins right and then that's your other piece of the shackle that has a side where it's it's concaved so the way this goes in is remember you're going to have a nut on the end of each pin the nuts go on the outside of the car and this pin is shorter than that pin this pin goes to through the leaf spring and this pin goes through the spring hanger here or the shackle hanger whichever you want to call it doesn't matter so if you were to put this pin through the leaf spring like this, okay, let's just say it's in there, and then you lift the spring up, well, okay, actually it's gonna go this way because the nut's on the outside of the car, right? So if you put that in there, okay, and then you lift the spring up, Okay, you might not be able to move the shackle over to be able to get it in here. You know what I'm saying? So, what you gotta do, and again, this all just kind of depends on exactly what you're doing. But what we're gonna do here is we're going to go... Okay, we're gonna put that in like that. And then we are going to lift the leaf spring up real high and then try to angle it onto this pin because our bolt up there is loose. And that's not the reason why I said that we don't need the nut on that bolt yet. That's a different reason, I'll tell you in a second. Now I know that that was a little uh, crap on the rib cage. I shouldn't be sitting like this. I know that was a little long-winded, but the thing is, is, you know, another thing in the manual that it says to do is to use a pry bar in the shackle. And, you know, that that's, I think that's assuming you have the weight of the rear axle bolted in place. But let's go ahead and let's grease Let's put some grease on our shackle pins. I'm gonna put some grease around here too, where our bushing's gonna rest, or the end of our bushing. Now there are better greases to use with these urethane bushings than the grease that we're using here, but it's gonna be fine. Now let's do what I said we were gonna do, which I just realized this would be, <laughs> Hold on, I gotta come back up. 
Well, I was just blabbing for a few minutes and pounded this shackle pin into the hanger halfway and realized that I didn't press record on the camera. So whatever golden nuggets or gems that I was spewing out to you about nothing, I guess, I guess you're, uh, I guess you're just going to have to miss out. I was talking about uh, guitar solos from <laughs> I don't know. Gosh darn it. <laughs> like it like we didn't know that that was gonna happen okay so now we got to get our leaf spring onto this shorter shackle pin. We can raise the spring up high and then try to get it on. And actually, you know what? Gosh darn it, why did I do that? I just realized it probably would be a million times easier if, if I didn't pound this pin in all the way. Well, let's just, let's just see what happens. I'm not sure what's going to happen here. Let's just pick this leaf spring up. Okay, it wants to hit the hanger, so let's do this. Okay, well that's not going to work, so we've got to go down. Okay. Oh, here we go, we can get it on like that. Nice, here, come down here and look at this. Sweet, huh? Oops. Go to your home! Do a little bit of grease around here because, well, because that's where our bushing's going to meet our convex areas on our outer shackle plate, which is going to go on this way. You want that convex um, side to be in, and plus you want to mirror the shackle plate on this side. Shazam! Wham bam! Thank you, ma'am! That's looking killer, man! Looks pretty good, huh? Yeah, I like that. That looks pretty good. Looks like something really nice and clean for us to ruin, huh? Awesome! So, the passenger side is done. And now the driver's side is going to go a lot faster. Seems to always work that way. Once you've done one side and you're going to mirror it on the other side, the second one it always goes faster. So we'll get that done real fast on the driver's side. That'll be fun. And then we're going to get our rear end and we're going to put that in place. And then it's going to really look pretty darn cool. Oh, I'll just go ahead and tell you right now, the reason why we're not going to tighten up any of these nuts, any of this hardware on our springs and shackles yet is because you want to wait until you have the car sitting on the ground with the weight of the car on the springs and everything before you start cranking stuff down. You know that Billy Joel song, Allentown? That just started playing in my head just started playing in my head. I'm hearing it right now. Alright, driver's side. Let's go. Two things. The cardboard 
screwed up our paint job, so we'll have to fix that. And the other thing, in order to fit under here, well, all this stuff is in the way. And coming from the back, that curb is in the way. Maybe we could, ooh, maybe we could sneak through here. Let's try that. Maybe we can do that. Really, really do not like that curb. All right. Um, hmm. Oh, geez. <laughs> oh, here. I, I need two hands. I guess we could have put this under the car before we put both of the springs on. But, yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever, it's in. That's a bummer about our paint, but at least all we need to do is just hit this with some sandpaper on this spot and then spray it again and we should be good to go. It's called Tetris. Except for you actually have to move the blocks. And I ran, ran down <laughs> Yippee ki yay! That is awesome. It's too bad I forgot that this is sheared off. This is one of our plates for securing our axle to our leaf springs. There's one on each side. This is the driver's side one. And this piece right here, that is for your shock to slide onto. And then you put a nut on to bolt your shock in the place. It's the lower shock mount. And it is sheared off. That's the way it was on the car when we got it. And we discovered that in a previous video not that long ago. And yeah, this needs to be fixed. We got brand new U-bolts to sandwich the axle and the leaf springs together with our plates. They're in a the box right over there. But if we do that, we're going to end up taking this back apart again because this is gonna require some cutting and grinding and welding, but it's completely fixable. So we will take care of this in a future video here at Freeman's Garage. The previous project video with this car is on your screen right here. And the full playlist of this build is right here. And right here you can subscribe. And uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe. See ya. They're gonna work just fine.